Our first guest tonight, our only guest tonight, is an Oscar and Golden Globe winning actor and now writer of an amazing book about his life, Green Lights, comes out October 20th. Please say hello to Matthew McConaughey. Matthew. Hello, all. How are we doing, Jimmy? I'm good. How are you doing? Pretty good, man. Pretty good. I know you're, uh, you're, you're habitating with your family, the whole gang's there, your wife, your kids, your, your mom's with you. We got three generations of McConaughey's um, on the property. We're doing a pretty tight quarantine. Things are going pretty well, depending on which news stations we let mom watch. Uh, <laughs> she thinks we're doing the right thing, or we've kidnapped her, depending on which one. And about every two weeks, we get together and have a, OK, we've been trying to see the upsides of this quarantine now, everyone, kids included. Let's talk about what sucks about this quarantine, and I don't care if you cuss about it. So that really? gets us through it. That's so you yeah. let the kids. How old are the kids now? We got seven, ten, and twelve. And so you say use whatever language you want to use, <laughs> and that is good. That blows off steam. It seems to help so far, and that they actually get get kind of a nice buzz out of using some of those words they wouldn't have otherwise been able to use. <laughs> they, no, that's completely legal right now. Which of the kids curses the most? The seven-year-old. The seven-year-old. Seven of course, of course. <laughs> Now, this book you've written, I read the whole thing, and it is unbelievable. It is so good. It is so entertaining. It just, there are, there's so much crazy stuff in this book. Like, there's, like, for instance, you talk about doing peyote in a cage with a mountain lion. That only gets one yeah. sentence. Like, that's how much, <laughs> that's how jam-packed it is. That's a true story? That's a true story. That's a true story. And the, and the line that comes after that says, and I've also got 78 stitches in my forehead that was done by a veterinarian. A lot of people come to me and go, wait a minute, are those two, is that the second part of that story? And I was like, no, 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 no. The first part about the mountain lion with peyote, that all ended with a, a purring kitten. Uh, the next one ended up when my nephew ran over me. But that was the 78 stitches with a uh, uh, um, veterinarian. Was the mountain lion doing peyote also? Man, I don't know, but I tell you this, we were on the same frequency. <laughs> now, Matthew, is everything in the book true? Because there's one thing, I have to say, I believe everything in the book except for one thing. And that well, is the story about, I believe most of the story, you, in the middle of the night, you'd get up and you'd steal wood from a nearby construction project. And yeah. you, each night, you'd go and you'd get a, like an armful of lumber and you'd come back and you built a tree house that you claim was 13 stories and 100 feet high. Is 13 that, stories. Is that 13 true? stories is a fact. Uh -huh. I was able to count the stories. The 100 feet at whatever age I was, 8, 9, 10, may have been more like 85, but it looked like a mile to me. It's, uh, 85 is crazy. It, it was, it was taller than any tree house I've ever been, to, I've ever been in that I, that I built. And I would cut these little holes out around the trunk to where I had this little ladder, which I could new smoke, I could climb all the way up and get to the to, to the top. And that 13th story, I was well above every pine tree in the entire forest. And your parents never wondered where all this wood was coming from? No, they never saw it. That's why I had to sneak out every night for three months, for 90 straight days during the summer. <laughs> I would wait till dad went to bed, sneak out the window, <laughs> and go down there and steal this lumber and work on it, and then and then it'd steal the lumber, because I had to steal the lumber at night, and then the next day when Dad would go to work is when I'd sneak out and go work on the treehouse. I get the sense that your dad wouldn't have minded the stealing of the lumber based on some of the stories about pipe <laughs> and whatnot, but your dad and mom, real character, uh, really unbelievable. Your dad and mom were married three times to each other. They were divorced twice. Once, once you didn't even know they were divorced, you thought mom was on vacation. <laughs> it was actually that summer when I built that treehouse. I thought mom was having a little vacation down in Florida, an extended, extended, extended one. Yeah. You talk about your dad frequently questioning whether or not you were his actual son. And yeah. I, I saw this picture of your parents' wedding. And I mean, your dad, you could be a twin. I mean, your dad, you guys yeah. look exactly alike. Was there really a question or was that just a joke? I, I, don't, I don't think so. I think it was more of a running joke. But you got to understand my uh, oldest brother, my mom and dad's first child, uh, Rooster, who you know. Yeah. He's 16 years older than me. All right. Now, my middle brother, Pat, was my brother Rooster's 10 year old birthday present. They tried <laughs> to have another child for another six years and nothing stuck. Uh -huh. So they were failing. Uh -huh. All of a sudden, whoop. Uh, mom's got 
a belly growing. She thinks it's a tumor because, hey, we've been trying for six years to no avail. This can't be a baby. And Dad's like, dang, what's going on? I couldn't make anything stick for six years, and now you get pregnant? That ain't my boy. So that was the running joke. It wasn't a tumor. And, uh, it was a movie star is really what it was. By the way, you, zip, you zip past the birthday present thing. The birthday present story is fantastic as well. Your brother was 10, Rooster. He wanted a little yeah. brother, so your parents went and adopted one. That's it. <laughs> Drove to Dallas, picked up my brother Pat at Houston Methodist, from Dallas Methodist, brought him home. Here you go. Happy birthday. Pat did meet his natural parents at, at one point, right? <laughs> yeah, he did. My parents asked him every single year, if you want to go meet your natural birth parents, please let us know. We'd love to take you. Pat's always like, no, 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 no. Until he was 18. And all of a sudden, they said, do you want to go meet your natural parents? He goes, I'd love to. I go, OK, I wonder why. He's going OK. They drive to Dallas, get the address, drive to the Dallas, take him to the curb of his natural birth parents' house. Go on in, Pat. We'll wait out here in the car. Take as long as you want. Well, Pat goes in, and in like two minutes, Pat's out, hops in the back of the car, says, I'm ready. And my mom and dad are like, well, is that it? Jeez, what happened? You were in there for two minutes. Is everything okay? He goes, yeah, I just wanted to, to check out my dad's uh, hairline because I'm starting to lose my hair. I want to know if I'm going to go bald. <laughs> 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 Matthew McConaughey's book is Green Lights. We'll be right back more with Matthew when we return. Our guest tonight is Matthew McConaughey. He's written a book called Green Lights. You're going to be doing a virtual book tour, right? Yep. Going on tour uh, very soon. I think the first, uh, first uh, show is going to come out. Conversation is going to come out on the 19th. I've had a bunch of great people that have shared the book book with that they liked it and they've agreed to have a conversation with me about it. Richard Linklater, who directed Days Confused. I have a conversation with him, John Grisham, uh, Oprah Winfrey, Reese Witherspoon, Kate Hudson, and Dwayne The Rock Johnson. So it's going to be a fun tour. That's a solid group right there. One other story yeah. from the book I wanted to mention is Little Mr. Texas. Uh, your mom entered you in. Was this a pageant, or what kind of a competition was this? Bandera, Texas, every year we're going to uh, give the find who out of his little Mr. Texas. It's a pageant. It's a you walk out on a horse, you answer some questions, you show your wardrobe, you howdy, ma'am, and do all that stuff. Put the picture up of little Mr. Texas there. And so this is something she was very proud of. She even referred to you as little Mr. Texas for much of your young life. Every single morning after this uh, Little Mr. Texas pageant that I won, uh, I would come to breakfast and to get the day started, mom would point to this picture that was framed on the wall, that picture, and go, look at you. There's little Mr. Texas right there. Good morning, son. So I'm like, little Mr. Texas, this is great. Every single morning for 18 years. Well, remember that was in 1977. 2020, about one year ago, I came across that picture. I was like, let me Little Mr. Texas, how about that? Well, I zoomed in on the little plate on the trophy. And if you have a look at it, it does not say Little Mr. Texas. It says <laughs> runner up. <laughs> I wonder if I'd be sitting there talking to you right now. If I would have had the life I had, if I would have grown up thinking I was runner up instead of what my mom liked me and told me I was Little Mr. Texas. What I need? <laughs> that is unbelievably good. So, Matthew, you have done something for us. I, I requested this, actually. I asked you because things aren't so great right now. And right. anybody that saw We Are Marshall knows that no one gives a better uh, pep talk than you do. So give the country a pep talk. Will you give us, inspire us, Let's please? Hear. All right, here we go. <clears throat> hey, America, 2020 has been one for the books. On that, we can all agree. And I say it's time to turn the page and clear our eyes so we can better see. Time to anchor ourselves to our better natures and redefine some of our nomenclatures. Time to respect ourselves and each other. Time to remember our values. Time to listen to our mother. No doubt about it, America, we are under construction, all trying to move forward without further deduction, going through growing pains, trying to function. Let's make meeting in the middle our journey's junction. Hard work and sacrifice, we gotta earn our way to where we need to go. Nobody's gonna do it for us, this we gotta know. There's no fancy algorithm that holds a secret key. It starts in the mirror, it starts with you and me. Time to reveal, revive, and testify. The truth is actual, that ain't no lie. Gotta start playing better at this game called life as sisters, brothers, fathers, mothers, husbands, and wives. Start building bridges instead of dead ends. Love our neighbor like ourselves, make amends. 
Expect more of ourselves and from each other so we can have faith again in myself, yourself, and in one another. We gotta start blessing up instead of bowing down to all that funny money wearing the crooked crowns. We gotta create opportunities for the I and the we. Have conversations without condemnation so we can speak free. Lee. Build trust again instead of suspicion. Refill our gas tank so we can crank the ignition. Time to come together, wear a mask, and vote so we can write our song note by note. Get in the zone, find our frequency again. Get back on a highway where we all can win. A poem, a rap, a rhyme, it all seems, but I'm pretty damn sure you know what I mean. What do you say, America? Let's turn this red light green. Hi! We've done it. Get this book. You can pre-order it now. It's called Green Lights. It comes out October 20th. Matthew McConaughey. Thank you very much, Matthew. It's great to see you. How are you doing? Good to see you, Jimmy. Yeah, man. You too. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel. I hope you enjoyed that video. Hit subscribe and all your dreams will come true, assuming your dreams are to watch more YouTube videos.